All right, welcome. Um, we've got Aparna Patel. And Hello. She, she, hey, how are you? You're the hero of the month. So we want to find out about what you're doing and who you do it for and, and any good insights you've got that can help other architects. Um, yeah, just because you've been on a learning experience for the last few years. Um, so tell us, who are you? What do you do? And who do you do it for? I'm Aparna. Hi. Uh, the name of my company is Mansur Architecture. And I'm originally from India. What my company... Of... Oh, sorry. Go on. Yeah, I said my company, Mansur, uh, we practice Vedic architecture. That is our niche. Vedic architecture, right. Yeah. And what part of India? I'm just curious because India is becoming, um, you know, such an important, you know, India, China are just becoming so important. Yeah, yeah. I'm from Maharashtra, the state of Maharashtra originally. Right. Okay. Uh, from uh, close to Mumbai. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. The Mumbai Indians, the cricket team. There's a good documentary on Netflix about them. Okay. If you don't know cricket, you wouldn't know the Mumbai Indians, but they're pretty, cricket is pretty important in, uh, in India. And I'm a cricket. Yeah. 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 All right. So how long ago did you come from India to the U S and why did you come to the U S and, and, uh, and, and I want to ask kind of what that was like coming from India to set up in America. Cause we've talked about this before. Well, it was a natural process of marriage right. for a girl. After my studies, I got married and I followed my husband. He's a scientist. I have my education and training in architecture and planning in India. Right. So I followed him after marriage. That was in 2000. And I'm here since then. Okay. <laughs> so since 2000. Now, what was it like? I mean, what was it like? Obviously, completely different culture, but... Did you go straight into setting up your own firm or did you work for another firm or uh, it must have been incredibly intimidating, um, changing cultures and languages. And uh, I suppose you spoke a little, did you speak yes, any English when you came? Yes, I did speak in English, but I did not have this American accent. Right. I had to learn it. Even now I have the exotic Indian accent, <laughs> yes. but coming, coming to America was a big cultural shift for me. There were so many new things I had to learn. I had to um, understand not only the language, not only the way things work, but also in architecture, I had to understand the way buildings function. Right. In India, we work in RCC, brick, concrete. Here it is drywall, steel. So there was a huge learning curve. And uh, I did a job first. I was looking for work. So I ended up doing job for couple of years and then I proceeded with my uh, internship development program gave my exams and I started my company in 2016. Excellent 2016 and so one of the I don't know uh, you talked about Vedic architecture and I know it's um, it, it's it's kind of the influence and flavor. Tell us about Vedic architecture. What is it and uh, how does it work? Vedic architecture is the ancient uh, architecture which is based on the principles of uh, Vedic. These are, these are called Vedic principles. And um, very, I'll try and read, I'll try and read to you what I, who I consider my guru. Uh, he says that this science deals with the eternal process of the subtle energy manifesting into material space or material form. So in short, Vedic architecture is about the science of manifestation of energy into matter or material form. So Einstein's E equals MC squared energy yes. is subtle, it's everywhere. But if you have to give it a material form, that's what you give it as a Vedic yeah, that's, that's amazing, isn't it? So it's often amazing some of the, I don't know, the ideas and technology that came um, from a long time yeah. ago mm -hmm. that they, they discover these principles and they can be, you know, even today, they're still valid. So, okay, so it's all about manifesting energy at a very high level. <laughs> what are some of the things that, that you do to manifest energy or good energy, I suppose. I don't know, is it good energy, bad energy? I think we've talked about positioning, you know, 
bedrooms mm-hmm. in the right place mm-hmm. and things mm-hmm. like that. But at a high level, what are some of the things that help energy? Sure, sure. Now, the, the, the principle is that everything around us has five elements embedded into it. Our earth, our environment, our cosmos is made up of five elements, which is um, air, water, fire, earth, and space. Space is akasha, or that, that subtle source from which everything is born. Stars are born, universe is born. So with the principles of Vedic architecture is you define these four elements in a frame of uh, mandala. Mandala is a frame. So mandala is a word for a frame. You position these elements in that frame and based on these elements, then you place the functions of a building accordingly on that frame. Okay. And these four elements, or these five elements, not four, five elements are based on the path of the sun as it rises in the east, takes a southward path, and sets in the west. So very, in a nutshell, we define the five elements on a grid. Right. And then we place the functions of a building on that grid. That's awesome. So I know it's incredibly, you know, I'm asking you to explain things at a high level in a nutshell, which is probably very unfair, right? But, it, you know, it's, it's fascinating that, you know, and so you come up with a, a framework that incorporates those aspects and then you design to make sure that you're, you're hitting those aspects of energy. So what we've talked about some interesting things a while ago um, and you talked about... Um, how it, the impact, okay, so it's all very well to say, okay, it, it better energy and all that, but how does it manifest in people's lives? What sort of impact can having the house designed using Vedic principles, what impact can they have on people? And do you have any interesting stories about people who have moved into a Vedic space and seen an impact? Yes, oh yes, I see, I see it. And honestly, when I see that happening, I'm myself surprised and pleasantly so because these these are so powerful principles i'll give you an example there was a client who came to me whose business was not doing very well so i went to see his space i, I examined his shop he had, a, he had a retail space and his house and found out that there was something wrong with the earth element of his house right now according to Vedic principles you need to have a complete uh, you need to have that element in full totality in the plan. You shouldn't have chamfer, you shouldn't be cut, there shouldn't be, um, this, the, the element should not be cut off. So what we did was we examined it and then I remedied it for him. I completed that element by building out that space. And guess what? His business turned around. Right. 180 degrees. Some of his money had gotten stuck. He wouldn't get the payments back from some of his clients. He received those back. So completing the earth element, it is responsible for finances, which is responsible for stability. He got all of that back. So his the, the instable finances became stable, if I may. So yeah, right. it, it worked for him. So that is one example. And many such examples I, I see my clients experiencing. Uh, once they incorporate these principles in their homes, in their offices. Now, another one you've talked about is relationships. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Look at your face light up. <laughs> yeah. uh, yes, relations, of course. Now, I, I, need, I, need to, I need to give, you know, Richard, I give lectures in universities on these principles and they go on for several hours. Yes, I know. It's but, very unfair. And but, I, but said, very, I said, but 10, very, we're going to go a bit longer than I said, because this is, you know, this is really interesting stuff. So for relationships, uh, Vedic principle says that you need to have in a residential setup, the master bedroom should be in the southwest zone southwest, of yep. the house. Because Southwest is represented by the earth elements, and this is where the master bedroom should be, because right. it guarantees or it um, guarantees is, is actually the right word, because the principle is that you get your visions, 
your long-term planning, your financial stability, your relation stability is all based in the earth element, which is in the southwest zone of the Vastapurush Mandala. Now, is that the Mandala. same in the southern hemisphere? Because I'm going to go and check my bedroom. Um, I don't think I'm in the southeast, but is it the same in the southern hemisphere or does it flip mm -hmm. around? It's still mm -hmm. south, no. southwest. southwest. So, okay. So when you my, have my bedrooms, my bedrooms in the wrong place, but yeah. <laughs> so if you have your bedroom in southwest with the with the head facing south, the Vedic principles state that you will have a very stable, stable relationship. Okay. You will have stability in your finances. There'll be stability in your career. Um, if you have it in the opposite zone, which is the water element, which is in the northeast, exactly that nearly opposite to southwest then there are unstable relationships finances don't last careers don't go for a long long period of time right. and these are sets of principles which have been time tested in india people prefer to have these zones in their homes when they build uh indian clients who are my uh, major clients here in the u.s they prefer to have their homes on these mm. principles mm. I would not be able to explain exactly why or how that happens, but I would definitely say that this is based on the experience of all these years. Mm. Not my, my experience alone, but experience of so many clients. Mm. So we prefer to have master bedrooms, southwest corner, main offices, southwest zone, um, company CEO, southwest, uh, the head of the office, Southwest, because Southwest is stability, finances, career, long-term planning, all of that good things, which is which is required for strength and anchoring power, is in this zone of Southwest. Or right. element. Fascinating, and and so Fin, yeah, it, it, it's amazing. So Fin Shui has similar type of, how does it compare to feng, feng, feng Shui? Now, what my guru told me once was that uh, the Buddhist monks, they carried these principles along with them across the Himalayas into China. Right. And in the mainland of China, they practiced these principles. They adopted it to suit to their needs, and which is called feng shui. So the term feng shui is uh, yin yang, the principles. So they adopted from the principles of Vastu or Vedic architecture, and they took it in China. I'm not a feng shui expert, but I know that they also talk of five elements, and they also have these framework within which the functions are set up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's all I can comment on. Excellent. Okay. Okay, so I want to move. So that's amazing. And I'm sure, you, like you say, it's very unfair to say in 10 minutes, tell me Vedic architecture. <laughs> but in a nutshell, what I've picked up, it's about energy and it's about by locating different rooms in certain positions, then you're going to maximize the energy um, that, that is available to you. And, it, and, and it'll align with um, the energy will align with the best things in life. So you'll, be, you'll have a happier life. Okay. Tell me about um, any insights you've had by being a business owner. What's the, what's the one thing that you've learned in the last few years that's helped you as a business owner? Being humble. <laughs> being very, very humble. Uh, and very honest because what I practice, some people, just, some people find it very... Uh, esoteric, they find it very strange. They find it, it, how can we just believe in something like this? So I have to explain to them in a science, a scientific form. But as a business owner, I think being very humble and explaining it to them as humbly as possible has made me uh, put my principles across in the best manner. Right, clients. right. And you talk about, you know, um, in business because we're told a lot of things about business and do this and do that. And, you know, you're supposed to do this, but you've always um, talked about 
realizing that everybody you deal with, whether it's a CEO of a company or a husband and wife or something, but everybody's a human. Yes. Tell me about that insight. You know, did you, did you, were you trying to do other things originally or, you know? I have, I have, I have realized and come, come to understand that my clients, I mean, everyone, we're all humans. Yes. We talk with each other. We have the same fears. We have the same concerns. End of the day, we have the same um, problems that we all face as humans. So getting, getting, getting to know my clients on a very human level, addressing their fears, addressing their concerns, has helped me help them in the best possible manner. And one way is, I used to I used to consider I must be very professional, very very curt, very uh, very strong. I should look very aggressive. Right. But but that's not always the case. But the more the more uh, human I am, the more humble I am, the more clients trust. Right. The more they share, right. and the more they share, the more I understand, and the better I can serve. So right. this. Well, what I mean by human is when I go in a meeting, I don't have to be a very aggressive person. I can just be myself. Yes. yes. I can also express my fears. I can also say, I'm sorry, I don't know what you mean, but I think this is this. Is this. Or maybe I'll find out. I think that's, that's, very, what I mean by human. that's very you. And, uh, you know, sometimes I think as business owners, we need to put away the, the sales manuals that, teach us to, you know, say this and do this and, um, you know, don't give up and, you know, follow up a million times and um, ask deep, you know, ask. Um, sometimes, as you say, you've just got to show a human side and connect with someone on a human level and you don't need the sales books, you know. You just <laughs> need to connect with people on a human level and they'll want to connect with you. And that's, I, I, I definitely, it's what I'd say, knowing you, Apana, um, you're one of the kindest, uh, most, most human centered people um, that I know. And oh, so, thank you. yeah, so, you know, I feel calmer every time I leave you, maybe you've got your bedroom in the right place and it's having an impact <laughs> on me all the way down in New Zealand. So, Hey, thank you, Apana. Uh, you're this month's hero of the month and uh, thank I, look, you. I look forward to continuing to work with you. Thank you, Richard. Thank you very much. You've been awesome. <laughs>